Hi guys, welcome to the video, it's Tuesday, and this Tuesday I just wanted to talk about my collection of Sarah Waters novels. I have everything except Tipping the Velvet and Fingersmith on me at the moment. I know I've done a couple of videos about her books individually, but I've never done a video about her books as a collective, and I just thought I would rate my most favourite to my least favourite, because I have nothing better to do in my spare time, so. Um, if you don't know who Sarah Waters is, she she is a lesbian author who writes mainly lesbian fiction and her work has been adapted into BBC dramas and films, most notably The Handmaiden, Fingersmith, Tipping the Velvet and The Night Watch. I have read all of her major works and I'm a huge fan and I can't wait to read whatever she writes next. It better be about lesbians, that's all I'm saying. So I'm going to start with my most favourite book of hers and that is The Paying Guests. Now that might surprise some of you because I'm not sure it's her most famous book. The reason this is my favourite is because I was completely sucked into this story. It was a real page turner and it's quite a big book and I got through it very quickly, like I just could not stop reading it. So this is set in the 1920s and it's about uh, a woman and her mother who take in these lodgers who are a straight couple and basically without giving too much away things just on Fold. And I've, I've made a video about this book. I don't love the ending, but I'm not, I'm not going to say anything more. My second favourite book of hers is Affinity. I think this was her first novel that was published only because a woman I went on a date with told me that. So if it's not true, we'll just, that's never mind. Um, again, this is a bit of a page turner. It's a bit shorter um, and it's set in the Victorian era and it's about a woman who starts visiting this woman's prison. And one of the prisoners is a disgraced medium, a disgraced spiritualist. The protagonist starts to get feelings for her and then again things kind of unravel. It has an incredibly clever twist. Again, I'm kind of ranking the books in terms of how sucked in I was to the story and this is definitely second place for me. So my third favourite novel of hers is Tipping the Velvet. I don't have it on me. I actually read this book a few years ago and I loved it but it was very, I remember thinking her writing at the time was very dense. That opinion has changed but at the time, maybe it's just because I was a lot younger, I don't know if I just had a shorter attention span or what. Tipping the Velvet is also set in Victorian times and it's just about this young woman who basically goes on a discovery of her sexuality and I think her journey resonates with a lot of us, especially the heartbreak, the drama and so on and so forth. And it's very much intertwined with the theatre scene and it's, it's, it's gay. It's iconic. My fourth favourite is The Little Stranger. Now this book is controversial because the protagonist is a male and there's no lesbian content in this book. With the main female character there's a tiny bit of subtext but it's it's not, it's essentially a post-war gothic. I would categorise it as a ghost story or I would put it in horror. I was into it, she's a good writer, she knows how to write a mystery. Yes it wasn't about lesbians but I, I didn't hate it to be honest and prefer it over a couple of her novels which are about lesbians. And this is not the first time I've had to google what other people thought of this book and the ending because the ending leaves a lot to be desired but the ending gets people talking. It would have been cooler if it was about lesbians, I'm not saying it, it, but yeah, she probably was just trying to spread her wings a bit. Now second to last would be Fingersmith. I know that's probably controversial because it's one of her most well-known novels and it's been adapted so much and people love it and people get really engrossed by it and it has so many twists and turns and it's very clever. The reason this is so low on my list is because I didn't finish Fingersmith. I do need to reread it, it's been a few years since I've even picked it up. Again, I I just I found her writing back then quite difficult to read and it was quite slow and I think I just lost I just must have lost patience with it um, so I just don't have fond memories that's my reasoning. Vicar Smith is basically about a con man and his friend who seek to scam this heiress out of her fortune and out of her money. He seeks to marry her, take her money and throw her in the madhouse however the other con he has enlisted to help him 
who is posing as the heiress's maid. The heiress and the maid fall in love and then that's when all the twists and turns and people trying to screw each other over. Just it's, it's a bit of a wild ride basically. Plot wise I would say maybe it's her best. And what I do like about Fingersmith is it's one of the few books of hers which has a, a promising ending. So yeah, there's that. And last on my list would have to be The Night Watch. It's okay. I just didn't really care for the characters. I didn't care for the storyline. The book follows different people and it follows a lot of different stories. And it's all set in wartime Britain. It's very interesting as a period piece. There is some lesbian content in there, which I did enjoy, but apart Apart from that I just I wasn't very I just wasn't very captivated by it to be honest I don't even think I would bother doing a review of this book I will reread Tipping the Velvet and Fingersmith and I'm gonna do a review on both of them a more in-depth review because it's been years since I've read them and I'm interested to see if my mind has changed, my tastes have changed. But even though they're the two books that she's most known for, I just don't think they're her best, personally. If you've read any of her books, let me know what you think. If you've read all of her books, let me know what your own personal favourite to least is. Maybe we match up, maybe you're the complete opposite of me. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!